hope you all enjoyed Cancun. It's a lovely place, but I'm a bit disappointed to see that none of you have got a suntan. Well, I suppose that's to be expected, really, because whilst many of you were out there lecturing us on how we need to change our lifestyles to combat global warming, it was actually the coldest week that that Mexican city had seen for over 100 years. Now, back in the UK, we've also had the spectacle of scientists trying to suggest that one of the coldest Novembers we've seen in the last 100 years was actually caused by global warming. I mean, do these people think we were born yesterday? I will make you understand. Well, this sounds familiar. Chairman, may I start by uh, wishing everybody a very happy and uh, cold New Year. Great. Uh, I fought my way through the blizzard in Copenhagen, like many of you did. Uh, interesting, isn't it, that we've had the coldest winter so far on record in London for 30 years. It's the same in Poland. It's the same in uh, Korea. It's the same in China. Uh, we've had the coldest temperatures in Florida, Arizona, Texas, the first snow in Texas, I think, for 100 years. And, of course, as Charles Corrin of the London Times said, my goodness me, my goodness me, un we simply don't get it, of course. Of course, that's what global warming is all about. We've got to get used to freezing temperatures. When are you all going to wake up? Scam, scam, scam. I'm amazed that every winter I hear this. It's cold, so global warming must not be real. Do I have to remind people that, generally speaking, it is cold during the winter months and it is during the summer? And that cold spells do happen, regardless of any current climate trend. But I can understand the confusion a big cold spell like this can cause. The coldest December on record. A return of the snow one week before Christmas has caused more chaos. Roads have been gridlocked across the country. The Met issuing several severe warnings of heavy downfalls and ice. A lot of the confusion comes from the fact that most people think that global warming means that it gets warmer every single year, for any given month in a year, and at every single location on the globe. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. For example, if you take a look at the global temperature records in the past, you can see it's not a smooth graph with every year being warmer than the previous. And you see exactly the same pattern for local temperature records. So if a few subsequent years haven't been warmer, or you get a couple of frigid winters in a row, it does not mean that global warming has stopped, or even isn't happening. So what exactly is happening now, with all the snowstorms and cold we are currently getting in Europe? One of the weather systems that determines how warm or cold the winter will be in Europe is the NOW, North Atlantic Oscillation. It has two states, a positive and a negative, and each of these states cause very different weather. The positive phase happens when air pressure is low over Iceland, but high down south over the Azores of West Africa. The pressure differences as a result will cause strong westerly winds, which whip up storms and sometimes cause floods. Essentially the engine behind the strong storms that can hit Europe from the west during winter. But during a negative phase, the pressure difference is low, weather systems slow down and get blocked by what meteorologists call blocking highs. These are big zones of high pressure systems that spread down from Greenland in winter and stick around for weeks at a time. And these pressure systems bring cold air from the Arctic straight to Europe and bring warm air into the Arctic region. Just like during the previous winter, this is exactly what is happening now. The now is again in a negative phase bringing very cold weather to Europe. If you take a look at the temperature maps of the Northern Hemisphere, you can see the telltale signs of a negative now, with temperatures of up to 15 degrees centigrade higher than normal in Greenland and parts of Canada. In those regions, people are actually wondering when winter will start. The very same phenomenon that makes it so cold in Europe and warm in the Arctic is also responsible for the cold in the US and large parts of Asia. Airports on the U.S. East Coast are struggling to return to normal after severe blizzards caused thousands of flights to be called off. Services have now resumed into and out of Boston, New York and Philadelphia, but heavy snow and strong winds are still causing delays. Authorities have declared emergencies in five states, with officials warning people to stay off roads as snow deepens and drifts. It's not just the east coast of the United States in the grip of wintry weather. Here in China, snow has fallen on large parts of the north of the country, causing travel chaos. Temperatures dropped to minus 25 degrees Celsius in some areas. And despite the current cold weather in certain areas of the Northern Hemisphere, there is a good chance that 2010 as a whole will be the warmest year on record. And in the very least, it will be a time of 2005 for the warmest year. There is, however, a second part to this whole story about the cold weather we've been having lately. 
As you can see from this clip, people mark the fact that there's a suggestion that this cold weather and snow might be caused by global warming. Now, back in the UK, we've also had the spectacle of scientists trying to suggest that one of the coldest Novembers we've seen in the last 100 years was actually caused by global warming. I mean, do these people think we were born yesterday? It's not as silly as you might think it is at first glance. The first thing you need to realize is that global warming causes oceans and air to warm. Warm water evaporates more easily, and warm air can hold more moisture. This subsequently means that when there is precipitation, there is more of it in a shorter time frame. And you can imagine what the effects are when this area is a cold region. As cold air cannot hold as much moisture, it drops it as bucket loads of snow. This is also indicated by a known statistic among researchers, which is that we get more snow in warm years. This is completely counterintuitive to what you would expect, but the data does indicate this trend. However, in recent years there have been publications that are pointing in the direction that the melting of sea ice in the Arctic might be the cause of recent cold winters. The proposed mechanism for this goes as follows. Sea ice in the Arctic has two main effects on the weather. It acts as a reflector for incoming heat from the sun, preventing it from warming the ocean. It also creates a barrier between the warming water and the atmosphere, reducing the amount of heat that escapes from the sea into the air. During the autumns of 2009 and 2010, the coverage of Arctic sea ice was much lower than the long-term average. The open sea, being darker, subsequently absorbed more heat from the sun in the warmer months. With the ocean remaining ice-free for longer than usual, the air in the Arctic could absorb more of the heat in the ocean, causing higher air pressures which have as a result a reduced pressure gradient between the ice and low and the Azores high, in essence creating a negative now. The last word on this hasn't been spoken in the scientific literature. As years with similarly low Arctic CSX extent didn't produce these cold winters, there's still a lot we need to research before we get a better understanding of how these reduced sea ice extents is influencing the climate and as such its long-term consequences are not fully understood. But it does show that global warming isn't as straightforward as many people believe it is, and the current coverage of this in the media is just because it makes a nice story. But the global temperature trend is clear when you look at the data. For example, the last decade was the hottest on record. And for Europe, 7 of the last 10 winters and 10 of the last 10 summers were warmer than you would expect from the climatology. Looking out of a window is not a good measurement of what's actually happening to the world's climate. Just like an early and warm spring does not indicate a warming trend, a single cold spill does not indicate a cooling trend.